So good afternoon, my name is Lisa Cortez. I am a filmmaker on the board of Film at Lincoln Center. Um, my life is really crazy right now, but when I heard that there was an opportunity to be in conversation with someone who is such a bright light um, and is so brilliant, I could not turn down this chance to take the conversations that Effie and I have had through the years and, and share a little bit of that with y'all. So please join me in welcoming producer, rock star, <laughs> goddess, <laughs> Effie <laughs>
which is why it's really, I'm, I'm really grateful that you're doing this, because we've come up, like you were someone that I looked to. Do you remember, like we, when you were with Lee Daniels Entertainment, like you were, I was, pa I was patterning myself after you. So anyway, so this is a beautiful, for me, it's and a big full circle. And that's why we're wearing a lot of black too. For, exactly, slimming. Um, <laughs> but like that's, but that's the truth. So anyway, so that's it. So that's when I'm sort of making my way to film. Um, I, I have someone who's not doing well, so I thought it might have been an update. No, for not. So I'm saying your business. Yes. So I'm going to somebody's right. spot. Since it's New York, we could do that. But you know, before we go to Loyola, I think something really interesting that you and I were talking about that for for black creatives is how do we justify this to our our parents? <laughs> to be right? Because it is, you know, I think walking into this step, I didn't have trust fund. You know, like, and, and I'm sorry, a lot of our peers, they might hide it, but they, they have them. They really do. Okay, so that's part of the, we're going to get into that later, what we're doing to address yeah. access. But what did you do with your parents to say, hmm? You know, I will say this. My parents were very encouraging. They were like, as long as you, I couldn't, I had to excel. Like, um, I'm an army brat, so failure was not an option. Right? So I had to always do really excel in school, and then that had to be the thing like, can you make a living at this? Because, and so what I did, my very first job, I was a senior at Loyola, I called the Black Business Bureau, and I said I wanted to work in film because I knew my white counterparts were had a brother or father, and not a lot of women there, but you know what I mean? Like, had someone to help them out, and I had no one. And this woman, I have no idea who she is, I have no idea what she said, huh, well my cousin is working on the five heartbeats. And I, what's your name again? I think it's Effie Brown and I tried, okay girl. So let me check, and she literally hooked me up. And that's how I got my first internship on the Five Heartbeats with Robert Townsend and Loretha Jones, who I still know today. Loretha Jones is a producer. I still see Robert Townsend. And that was how I got my start, because I knew that I wasn't gonna have the luxury of graduating and then figuring it out. I knew that I had to figure it out while I still had my parents paying for my college. Because they were very clear, there was no five-year plan. There was a four-year plan or else. So I knew I had to hustle. And then from there, I went to film independent. And then from there, you know, I, like really failure wasn't an option and I didn't know any better. I knew that I was good with money. I knew that I was good with um, rallying the troops and like taking a hill from my army brat days, you know. And that's really, if anyone ever did a short film or any type of a film, that's really what it's about, it's managing personalities and like your little five dollars of money, you're like, where do you want to spend this five dollars? You can spend it on this, you can spend it on that, but this is all that you have. And so that was what sort of got me my leg up and I started doing really ultra low budgets that nobody else wanted to do. Like I got the jobs that nobody else wanted and I came up as a line producer and the first people to get me my jobs was the LGBTQ community. It was Andrea Sperling and Jamie Babbitt when I did But I'm a Cheerleader. And so that also helped me to start with like, where am I spending my time? What am I actually putting this sweat equity into? And it was, my very first film was always about marginalized voices or the other, but I didn't think of it as marginalized voices or the other. I thought of them as my friends, right? I thought of them as stories that like I wanted to see. They were my Sigourney Weavers. They were my, you know, my Terminators, so anyway. When um, Project Evolve, you meet Lori Parker, and I heard something that Lori Parker said to you, which I think is really important to message to this audience. 100%. So Project Involve was they took, you know, um, marginalized people who gave them a job. No, I gave them mentors, and they still have this to this day. And mine was a woman named Lori Parker, who was Gus Van Sant's producer did um, I Am Private Idaho, Drugstore Cowboy, and so she took a shine to me, and she's the first person that got me a passport. I went out of the country with her to Guatemala. Like anyway, so she was like my first, and she did, and she really took me in. And I, I'm sure it's shocking, but like I talked a lot of shit when I was coming up, and I was like, I'm gonna be like Jerry Bruckheimer and Oprah Winfrey, their careers had a baby, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? And like, you know, when you're young, you know what I mean? You don't know. You know what I mean? And I love the fact that because now I'm that person, I look at my assistant, I look at people, and I'm like, 
oh, the world's gonna punch you in my the face, face in a moment. I'm gonna be here for you. So she <laughs> said to me, she said, look, F, she's like, I know you're gonna make it. I feel you're gonna make it. Like, and I'm gonna help you make it. But here's something that they tell you that's a lie. And once you make it, you're gonna look to the left of you, you're gonna look to the right of you, and then you're gonna see that there's more space for other people to be with you. It's a lie when they tell you that there can only be one. And she was a lovely white woman with freckles and red hair, do you know what I mean? So she had her own different type of struggle, but like she looked at me, she said, you're gonna be able to look to the left and to the right and to be able to see that there were more. And she says, and like, I expect you as, oh I do, I always get, she says, as I am helping you, you must help other people come up because that's the only way that we're gonna make a change. And she told me this, I was, I was 21? I was literally a big, I was still like, I think I was freshly graduated, and it was that sort of mentorship and that sort of thing that like galvanized, like that's what I've been doing ever since. Like I've never not done that, and I don't know if she, I'd like to think that I would have evolved into like game changer and what we're doing, but it was because of her that she took me, told me, and she's 100% right. I'm not saying I'm at the top now, but I can look to the left and up to the right, and I'm like, there's space for us, right? You know what I mean? Like, somebody just needs an opportunity. That's all that this is. So that's what she told me, and that's what I do to this day. Well, you know, and I brought that up because I think it's really important to showcase these lies. <laughs> because, like, that's when you're really free. You're free as an right? artist when you're not leaning into that. You're free to com create community, right? you know? That I, we've done that for many years, and um, you know, I think that is also the part of your growth to becoming a producer, just stepping into that, and seeing your great skill set of working with every department and finding a voice and a space for them that's in accordance with the bigger picture mm -hmm. of the film. What was that aha moment that you're like, okay, I've done mind producing, I've done this, I've done that, because certainly, you know, I know my journey also, I was a script supervisor, I put together panels, yeah. you know, all this, doing my hustle to get into the business, even though I had an entirely, yeah, huge career in the music industry, I started at ground, below ground zero. Yeah. Um, what was your producer, I'm going to be a producer with a capital P, aha uh -huh, moment. And, and if you could break down capital P and little p. Producer. Sure. <laughs> you know, I wish I could say like when I had like, this is a, my aha uh -huh moment as a capital P producer, because I think it happened when I wasn't producing. I think it happened when I was almost like getting ready to get out of the business. I'll be real about that. And that was in 2018, where I knew what I wanted. I'm not going to get modern because I love what I do. It's a blessing. I dig it. But there's always, I think, an ebb and flow in anyone's um, sort of career where you have a moment where you're like, everything that I'm touching isn't working out the way that I want. I'm not being received the way that I want. I see my counterparts not knowing that they had trust funds, just thinking that they had more opportunity. And I don't see myself as a victim. I'm like, I'm not into that, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, well, they're white men. I'm like, so what? Right? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you know, you're just as good or whatever. Like, you know, and that's when the meritocracy, like, you realize, like, eh, it's not, it's not real. Um, but uh, let's look at that for a minute, though. Exactly. It's not a joke. It's, well, that's, it's not that's when you realize, oh, it's not real. That's why I say the capital P, big P producer, where I was, I had that, and I called it a come to Jesus moment, where I was like, you know what? It is on my heart to do what I'm doing. I have been doing it. I might not have been received well. I might have had like my ups and downs, but I've been able to do it. I've been able to help her. Like I think of But I'm a Cheerleader, which is like one of the movies that I'm so proud of. That I, I think it was in, I was a capital P producer. I was a line producer, but it's one of those films that's like a cult classic. Mm -hmm. And um, and it really it was about something. And kids still talk about it to today. You know, and I was like, oh, it was entertaining, but it meant something. For Can that. you give a long line? For <laughs> sure. Oh, no, well, but I'm a cheerleader. I was trying to, it was a satire about um, a camp. It's not, it doesn't sound funny, but it is. Um, about a camp that taught gay kids how not to be gay. And it was a satire. It had Clea Duvall, Natasha Leone, And it was really, and it was about, it had um, Kat 
Kathy Moriarty and Bud Corp. Like it had so many great people in it, and it was done with the satire. And that was one of my first movies that I like worked on as a line producer. Like, I was like, "You're in charge, go." Um, and I was like, "Nobody does this. There's no camp that teaches people how to, you know, not be what they are." And Jamie Babbitt, female director, right? She was like, um, "Yeah, I had to go to one." And this is what it was like, and I want to, you know what I mean? And I was like, get out of here. So that's when I was able to realize that you can educate as you entertain. And that's a movie that has stuck with people, you know, from the get, I mean, from, you know, for quite some time. Um, I totally forgot what my point was, and that's going to happen. So it's about the epiphanies. Oh, epiphanies. So anyway, so like, I was like, this is like, what am I bad thing about? It? Somebody help me out here. No, no. But that was, so the capital P, like, it was like, um, it was like 18, I was about to, about to leave. And then, um, and then I said, well, what's your, I had to really do, like, what's the problem? And I was like, well, one, I think I need some therapy. Okay, that's a real thing, you know, because you are not your job, right? Your self-worth isn't from the paycheck that you get or the accolades that you get. And that's something that I'm really proud of now because, like, now, like, we're hitting it, and I'm holding it with a loose hand. I'm like, it can come and it can go. My job is to do the work. And then that's something that came to me. And then the other thing was, you know what? You're tired of begging. You're tired of begging. You're tired of making money for HBO and these other places, you know, and independence. Like, because I haven't seen a dime of anything from any of the movies that I've done. Real talk. Do you know what I mean? And, like, and you're tired of like giving away your gift and having someone else exploit it. So how, how can you how can we build legacy? Because, as I said, I'm 50. I'm giving this another 10 or so years and building game changers so that I can pass the torch and I can have a passive income. Not a lot. Like, you know what I mean? That's legit. That's really what I'm trying to do. And that was when I was like, I need to get a fund together where somebody has to believe in this mission that I've been doing. On paper, I'm very successful. Somebody put some money into this so we can start financing these things and we can retain ownership. Because I'm sure a lot of you are filmmakers out here and then, you know what I mean? And you're like, that little check that you get, be grateful for because the only little check you're gonna get unless you have ownership in something. And then not only ownership, but some sort of accountability of the people that are doing you know, the financing. I don't wanna get too much into that, but that's the truth. If there's anything you take out of that, watch the money. You know, and that was my, big P sort of moment, my little P moments where I was like, I don't want to be the producer that's taken advantage of. And also, this is like, and this also, again, this is a wonderful, wonderful job. So I don't want to feel like it's such a tragedy I'm producing. It's a gift. Do you know what I mean? It's a gift. But there's something to be said where something is your craft and your profession that you want to be able to level up and you want to be able to, like I said earlier, have other people level up. Right? And my thing is, like, I'll be goddamned, and I always talk about deathbed, but I'll be goddamned if when I go, there's not a room for the women, people of color, LGBTQ plus IA, and people with disability that have not gotten their start and that have not, like, you know what I mean? That haven't made their way. I gotta make it easier. I got to. Like, and I think, and I'm not alone, and I don't think I'm having my son, like, you know, I think there's a lot of people, but like we have to collectively get together and make that happen. And I'm grateful that people invested um, in me. You know, I was grateful. Like I was originally, I was starting a duly noted ink. That was my company. It was a film fund that I was going in. I was trying to raise money for. But you know what the problem was? I didn't know any high net worth individuals. I knew workers, right? I knew people who knew how to ex um, to do my work. That's what I knew. And I was grateful that, I'm not gonna jump ahead, but I had the opportunity, Geraldine Dreyfus and Wendy Ettinger, who had this company called Game Changer Films, badass, when that Louie was running it before, and it was just a fund for women, you know, women filmmakers, primarily white women, I'm gonna be honest with that, and uh, they brought it in and said, hey, F, would you want, and Dan Kogan said, would you ever run someone else's fund? And I was like, hell yeah, because they had the access to capital I knew how to get it done, and I knew the cool, like, the, the movies and the stories that we should tell. So that, to me, was a really beautiful moment where I stopped being the little P producer. Changer, we're gonna yeah. get a little bit more into business models. Yeah. 
Uh, because it always is, I think, for producers, and even though I direct now, I'm a producer at heart. She's a director now. She has left us. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big deal. She's talent. I love that Where we hold her, her, right? Let's talk about health insurance. That's a producer, she did. Health insurance is real. Is, it's, health insurance is, is mighty real. Mm. Um, but what, you know, and what I looked in our, in our conversation is like, yes, it is the work, but it's also, it's more than the work. It's being of service. 100%. It is acknowledging, like, this is not, you know, we don't, we're not playing at this shit. And this is an opportunity that is grounded by, like, what we know from how progress is made. Right. You know, that there, it is to be of service. I think we both have said, like, that is so, because it's a service to other people to inspire them to enter and see what's possible, right? The work, the stories are of service to advance the narratives of the people and communities. And that culture are. and understanding. I mean, we're so polarized right now. Like, I really do feel that stories can change the world. They have, they do. I mean, we just have to be able to have more people tell their story so that we can further the game along, you know? Yeah. So how do you marry, you know, the being of service and the business? And maybe take us through Game Changer. Sure. And as may, if you think that's like the great model to marry this. Well, I feel like we're in the middle of Game Changer right now. So Game Changer is a production, financing, and development company. And we, um, like I said before, I was brought in to be able to run this company, and, and we had access to resources. So one of the films that we did was Passing. Mm -hmm. And like, oh, here's yeah. a great story about Passing. <laughs> Thank you. And this is about sisters, right? Nina Yang Bon Jovi knew that I was taking over Game Changer, and she knew that I would need a hit. And this is the beauty of people being like, we all rise together, right? Mm -hmm. She was like, look, I'm gonna make a little space for you so that you can finance some of this movie so that you can have a leg up. And I was like, thank you very much, Mr. Nin Yang Bang Jovi, you know what I mean? And so like, so that was one of the first movies that we put money into, and I was like, woohoo, cute. You know what I mean? We made a little bit of money for that. And then this next movie. How do you make a little bit of money? Well, here's the thing, and this is what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited oh, so <laughs> what the movie was, and this is being recorded, though, right? Okay, yes. so I think it's that much of the numbers, but like it was made for around $4 million, and it was sold to Netflix for 16 wow. right? Now, it seems like the story is like, what? We rich! You know what I mean? <laughs> no. Um, the investors, right, that invested in Game Changer for me to invest in the movie, they were rich. <laughs> they the ones up. So, but we, like, and that's when we had to change the business model from what it was prior I took it over. I was like, ooh, we can't do this because this is not sustainable. Which brings me to the point that people think that doing movies about the marginalized or the other is charity. I'm like, bullshit, it's business. It's business. And the only way that we're really going, I, I feel really adamant about this, that people see us as a viable business not as like a charity or something philanthropic. Because until we can start, we make that money, and then we can reinvest it in our own, that's the way to go. And then that's what we had to change the model of Game Changer to do. Like for example, we put in, we're the inspection, Elegance Pratt, it's a closing night movie called The Inspection. There we go, we have an the audience right here. There you go. Um, uh, so we, so we have the movie, it's coming out on Friday, and six we and put nine. in six and nine, and we put 2.5 into that, right? And so we were able to co-finance it with A24. And so the idea of that is, like, please go see this movie. Please have people pay to see this movie. You know what I mean? Like, help the sister out. Because that's going to be the thing that, like, the profits that made from that will come into the company, and then I'll be able to stop begging for money and have our own money so I can, and, like, start hiring, like, writers and directors to make their stories. Like, it literally is a cycle that we're trying to build. But that's how money um, this... Uh, game changer has come to be, but we've been through a couple of different business models where high net worth individuals would be like, here, Effie, here's like $2 million, you go and invest it. 
and then I invest it, and then they make the 120% return on investment. And I'm like, well shit, what do we get? Right, do you know what I mean? How am I gonna keep people employed and all of that good stuff? And then a part of also what we're doing, and I wanna give a shout out, is that we have Game Changer Nonprofit, and I have Aaron Heinzman, he's right up there, who's our executive director, and what we're doing is, is like, you know when you're doing these labs, which like Warner Brothers just shut down their whole lab, did you see that, right? It's like, it's happening, it's happening, call me, I told you, I'm sorry. It's happening. People are getting it. They're over the diversity and inclusiveness. Do people know what Effie's referring to? Yes. Like, the Warner Brothers shut down? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's Warner Brothers shut down. Warner Brothers did not shut down. Yes. <laughs> they, they shut down. Like, they, they shut down, down for all the writers' labs and like the directors' labs in stage 13, right? Which was something, remember when everyone was talking about diversity and inclus inclusivity? We have a lab. We have a lab. You can put you in this. You can do this. You can shadow, right? And like, and that's how people were coming through. And I was like, um, eventually this is gonna end, right? The pendulum will swing, and the pendulum is swung. So what we're doing at Game Changer is, is that we're gonna be giving stipends to producers and line producers to shadow me and my other fellow producers on our projects, and pay them money because when you shadow, you know, most times they expect you to work for free. I don't know about you, but I can't work six to eight weeks for free. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? So we're able to pay them so that the next time we do a movie, they can go in and make their own movie under, you know, under Game Changer. And we're doing labs and things of that nature. So anyway, so like that's what we're, that's where the model has sort of shifted to. But it's a new world order and I don't want to get depressing for people, but like there's only five places now that are buying. We're going back to that old contract system. It's not depressing. Right? It's hard what we do. Yeah, we, we, we don't have a life. We get called at all hours, even Very when we true. put the guardrails up. Yes. Um, <laughs> we have to give wonderful people bad news. All the time. And so as a producer, like if you're going to take this on, you have to understand and be realistic about the yeah, terrain. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. That's why I tell people like wanting to produce. I'm like, and I did a, a keynote like a while back, and I was like, yo, this is something I never tell you. Taxes, <laughs> taxes is real. Like I had a couple bad years, and Uncle Sam did not care. Right? <laughs> they, just, they were like, I still want my money. They're still like, you know, and I was like, Ooh, am I going to jail? And I was not the key. Um, but literally, like, there's like certain things of every movie that you do, you have to keep that LLC up forever, right? Unless, like, you sell it off. Like, it's these are the things that I didn't know, but coming from little P to big P, I was like, oh shit, hmm. I needed, I really wish, and I, you know, and also partnerships of like looking for people who have like the NBA. He's like, like, I got the creative, I know money, I know people, I know structure, I know that, but I definitely could use a little bit of help on, you know, like, hey, let's not go to jail today. Hey, half that might be, and I'm like, oh, I, I agree with that. So having those people to actually help out, because that's something that a lot of producers don't think about. Like, I legit didn't pay taxes for years. It was 2000, mm, it was why I had to go do Project Rewind. You know what I'm saying? Oh, see, I was no, 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 we're not talking about that. We're not talking about that. But I'm just saying. <laughs> but it was one of those things. You, can, you can Google it and it's fine. It it's just it's it's going to talk to death. But I'm just saying that there was a moment when I was outputting, a lot of producers output their own money. We're the first ones to sacrifice our own check. Sometimes we don't get a check thinking that we're going to make it big. And we don't, right? So we're out. We're out that dough. Right? So, and that's when I was like, Uncle Sam will understand. I didn't make any money that year. And Uncle Sam was like, Miss Brown. <laughs> Ooh, awkward. Yeah. So what my taxes you... are fine now. Now I have to look people and I'm going to together. Uh, but real, I mean, like health insurance, a great accountant. These things are super 100%. important because we're balancing so much. We're balancing in also our we need, and also I don't want to go back, but this is also why we're starting a producers union. We're the only group that doesn't have health care. We're the only group that people can pay us anything that they want to, right? You know, we're the first people that like they're expecting us to go into our fees, and we're not rich. That's why people have to really get the whole thing of like we are workers. Right. You know? You're not Harry Potter. Right. You, you know, know what I mean? you're not David with Harry. You know, we're it, it. It really trickles in, it it, really and it's about money. volume too. Like that's why I tell the story about like you know dear white people. I made twenty four grand on that over two years, and that was it. And I'm like, were you talking money? Series? 
no, I was not invited to be a part of the series, hence the therapy. Um, so, you know what I mean? Like, that's real, right? You know what I mean? But like, those are things, of, like, and that's why I say I talk about money and I talk about that stuff because it wasn't until I started sharing it that somebody else was like, let me tell you what happened to me. And I was like, what? And I wish, I, I wish like, like I wasn't so alone. But if we have that community, and I really feel that type of a union, and it's a supervisory union, like line producers, producers, like we all, I, I really think that we need to start something because it's not right. Like I truly don't have health care. I pay for my own health care. My staff, like we give them a stipend, but that's what it looks like right now. Because the only people who can really, afford, I'm just gonna talk on it, and you guys can say something different, but like DGA, you just talked about that. That's how you get that. That's beautiful insurance, by the way. Uh, so you know what I mean? Like that's the stuff. Like I have a mole. They'll go see you in twenty. It's great. You know what I mean? It's amazing. But a lot of times, most of us are like, Phew. don't get sick. Oh well, yeah, for a, for a long, long time, I was yeah. in the. Okay, I'm gonna make some ginger tea. <laughs> pop, pop some pineapple. Let's make it happen. Exactly. Um, if people want more info on the producers union, what's the status? Where do they go? 100% producers union dot org. They say that a little slower. Producers union dot org. And then you can just hit me up and I'll also shift it to you for sure. Um, how did you become shift to becoming a majority owner in Game Changer? Which I think is, you know, here's the thing. Nobody gives you companies. That's, you know, it's like people go, oh, we see you got a deal. Effie has this. No, no, we've been working for 25, 30 years in this business, and it's well earned. It's not deserved, yeah. it's earned. It's earned, but I will have to say, I will have to give, a, and I don't know if you have not know, but like Jackie Zayner was like a boss. Like I didn't, at the very beginning, remember I talked about I wanted to start Duly Noted Inc. Film Fund, and I didn't know any high net worth individuals, Geraldine Dreyfus, Wendy Ettinger, Dan Cogan were like, hey, do you want to come work and like run this? And I said, I will, if only it's not just women. Stop siloing us out, women, people of color, LGBTQ plus with disability, all of us together. That's how we're gonna change, you know, change the game. They're like, okay, great, blah, 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 like great. And so I was supposed to be an employee of the company. And then what turned out from the contracts that I had from like Netflix and the films that I had, that was worth, you know, once it was equated into dollars, I was like, oh shit, oh my god. Like, I'm coming with some stuff. I'm coming with dollars, right, you know? And, um, and then also there was a woman, and her name was Jackie, who was really lovely, and she, and she did not invest in the company, nor did she invest in this, but she did something that I thought I like, will always love her for. She said, you know what, you should actually own most of the company, because one, you're bringing that in, and two, without you per se, there isn't game changer. This is sort of being built, not built, I'm not, it's a, it's a village, trust and believe, like I have a fabulous team, but it was like the brand with like of what I've been creating and my work that earned, work that I've done, that's what I'm like bringing into game changer. And let me just tell you this, she said, and I said, oh, I don't know, I'm gonna go fight for this, and here's the most beautiful words a producer ever wants to hear. It's like, no, 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 you don't have to fight for it. Let me just talk about it, and I'll come back to you. And that's exactly what she did. She went to the owners of Game Changer, and they were like, oh yeah, makes perfect sense, go for it. I didn't have the balls to advocate for myself, because I told myself no before they could, and she was like, she's all like, sit down. I think your balls were on vacation. They were, they were on vacation. Balls. They were like, you know, I, I have, I got ovaries, yeah. But you know what I mean? I'm like, but that's true. And like that to me, I'm really grateful for her. Do you know what I mean? Because she was able to talk to her peers, and it was not a problem. Not, a, and I've never not, not had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to the inspection. Yeah. Once again, it's Friday at six and nine. Yes. I hope you have a ticket. And Please, I hope you bought a ticket to bring a friend with you. And I don't say mean that uh, with lightly. Like, you know, how are films, first of all, 
all the, you know, it's been in Toronto, amazing, amazing. I have, just, I have not seen one bad review because you know, There's one or two, but like, they you know, what the majority. They don't count. That's okay. No, we gotta have a hater. That's how you know you're doing something. Yeah, the body hates on you. But like, the, it's, I have to, and this is another thing where like, the grace shows up. Like, Elegance Bratton bringing me this script, I will be forever grateful. I'm not saying that that shoot wasn't hard, and a McCall's right there, McCall's like this. <laughs> right, it was something. Where did you shoot? Where did you film? We shot in Mississippi. Yeah. Right. In, the, in COVID? Oh, in COVID, in the summer, where like, look, sorry, just wave your hand, like that's McCall, he's one of the actors in there for sure. And Jason, you know, like, Literally, they are in like full on marine gear. And I don't know if you've ever been to Mississippi, but like that is hot. Like it looks like 100 degrees, and that's just the weather. But the humidity is 115, and they were out there. It was hard. Like, and people were passing out. Like, COVID was the best thing that ever happened to us because we had to get shut down from COVID. And, um, and we were able to come back. And it was my fault, by the way. Like, I'm the one that was like, as a producer, when you have the money, you shoot. Because when you hold on to the money, it always winds up going away. So I literally was like, we're gonna go, we're gonna go now, right? Do you know what I mean? I did, I know Jacqueline is like, it's true, I did. And, I, and it was the heat of the summer. It was like July, am I high? It was July, July in August. Mississippi, August. in August. Oh. It was so long, it was like literally, like, I think it literally, this is how bad it was, and I'm just saying because a lot of people of color in this audience. <laughs> we literally had like black folks would sit on this thing and be like, could you imagine picking cotton? <laughs> like, and that's what I truly got, like, that's some shit that y'all know what I'm talking about. When you have this moment when you're like, I can't imagine. <laughs> like, they didn't have a trailer. They didn't have nothing. You know what I mean? Like, literally, like, that was, that, that was facts. You know what I mean? And being like, in that, in a very strong respect for the ancestors, because right? you wouldn't be here if it was up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be real. I'll be like, I don't know if I could be that country strong. But yeah. So, Mississippi, first time director of a feature narrative. He had done docs, you know. He's, a, he's, I, he's, he's a, a bit like narrative. And I'm glad that he's not, I don't want to get him too blow up too much, but like, he's really fucking extraordinary. And I have to say, when I say it's like a bit of a god shot that he walked into the office, him and Chester, his, and my producing partner, his partner, it's, it's something. You Sometimes you know, when you know, you know. Like, I, like, you know, it's like, Oh, like this is it. I knew that this was it. And I knew that he was a guy, because it's really tricky. First time narrative filmmaker. It's his life story. It's a painful story about unresolved issues with his mother, who recently just passed away violently. Do you know what I mean? Like all the red flags were there, right? But there was also a spirit of being like, this is it, it don't matter. And he did a really impeccable job. Not to say that it wasn't hard, not to say that we all didn't go toe to toe, but the movie, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of him. And he is, he is literally, I'm, he's, I'm also very grateful that I'm attached to his next movie. That's how, that's how grateful I am. <laughs> like literally, like he's, he's Well, really I think as producers that is super important because yeah. I have been on that journey of you make that that's first film so and then they go on to the film that's four times the budget, and they're like, oh, hi, come to the rap, our rap party. No, you can come to the rap party, at least. I know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I've worked with a lot of, you know, first-time first time filmmakers that go off to do well. Like, that, that's some sort of weird thing. You know, like, real men have heard, dear white people, you know, doing, like, uh, rocket science with Jeff Blitz. Like, this, like, I got that, right? But it's just, a, it's a culture of, in this industry where the producer isn't thought of as a filmmaker. They're thought of as a tool. Yeah. And that's something where we're really trying to change the hearts and minds of people to be like, no, for real, it's a craft. It's a craft that we don't have to take front and center. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's your story, it's that, but like, we help. We help, we gather the team. It's just like the crew, which I always, like, we would be nothing without our crew. I don't give a shit what anybody says. I'm like, look at D. Like, you know what I mean? Like, really, like, I gotta give him love. Because there was many a day we would not have made it if you didn't fuck it out. Do you know what I'm saying? Anyway, take it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you praise, baby. Right here. That is very true. And people are like, oh, what is it? If you've ever been on a movie set and when shit's going sideways, you gotta be like, you're AD team. Like, what's going on right now? <laughs> uh, how did you? What? How did you sell it to AT 
A24. I didn't have to. And this is also one of these moments, I'm going to call it a grace, where um, Elegance knew A24. He went to school with one of our executives, Zach um, Sullivan Vargas, who was great. And they weren't going to do the movie until they bought on an experienced producer. And so it was a little bit in limbo. And then that's when he bought it to me. And I was like, not only do I want to produce this, I want to put money behind it. And then A24 was like, great. Do you know that's about the money part? Because they couldn't have cared less. Like, they're ballers. Do you know what I mean? But they were like, great. You have someone that knows what to do. And that's how that really all came together. It wasn't, I have to say, I can talk about other movies that it was a struggle to put the money together. I can talk about that. This was a moment of, not to say that it wasn't hard in other ways, but it was a moment of grace where it was like, great, all the pieces fell together. And sometimes when pieces fall together, it's because it's meant to be. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I was literally going. Like, the inspection was meant to be. I'm grateful to be, you know, to be a part of it. Have Gabrielle Union and Jeremy. I was going to ask you, Jeremy, and well, Jeremy how did you get, the, how did the, these folks come to the film? And we're talking about Gabrielle Union and Jeremy Pope. And exactly why well, I have to give a little shout out. Thomas Right, like that's my agent who actually oh, organized a meeting. Right? I went to college with him. Oh, did you really? I did. You know what? We all know each other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so Dana actually organized a, a meeting with her, I'll have another, and we met, talked about it, and then at the same time, another agent was also was talking with A24, so it was again that beautiful convergence. And so that's how that came together. And of course, with her personal story, she was able to identify and come in. But it was through, because I had an agent, I'll say, I haven't had an agent in a long time. Do you know what I mean? But like, like that's the purpose of like having a team and having someone be like, I got you, let's move forward. You know, Jeremy Pope came through. He had an excellent casting director, you know, Kim Coleman, who's done quite a few movies. And she was like, Jeremy Pope. Right, we're like, yes, and we saw him, and literally, it wasn't like a lot of people in contention, it was literally, this was his role. We were very clear that we were not hiring a heterosexual, direct, an actor, to play this role. We weren't doing that. Like a game changer, our real, you know, our motto is you can't make something about us without us, period. Like that's what that's about, and that was it. And everyone was beautiful again. No one fought. Everybody was like, yes, of course. High five. And like that's like, oh my god, that beautiful convergence. Not to say that it wasn't hard, but like that was like that was the convergence. And it was great. So we're in our in the final yeah. room here. Okay. Good. Um F, what's your superpower? <laughs> Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> Aaron's known me all my life, like what, 30 years plus? Yeah. <laughs> What's your producing superpower? Thank you. Because you have many superpowers. Well, let's hear you. Producing superpowers. Um, I'm going to say now my producing superpower is being able to see other people's perspectives and seeing what they need. That's, gonna, that's my superpower right now of being able to look to call a thing by its name. I guess if there's that's also something like we can we can identify with. And to be like, why is this happening right now? What is the note behind the note? The why? What are they not getting? Why are they a like and also therapy has been amazing. Because like that's also the thing of like why are people why are you acting like this? What are you doing also for myself sometimes? Like why are you coming for their throat? And I'm like, oh that's a trigger. My black girl chip on my shoulder, I'm gonna let that down because that's not what their intention was, that's just how I heard it. Because literally, producing, if any, I mean, I'm sure a lot of producers in here, it's really about managing talent, and that talent being, I believe, talent is the crew, talent is the cast, and talent is the above the line people. Like that, all of them, like trying to figure out what is what, like what do you want? And sometimes being able to make that hard decision, like what, what they want, is it what I want? And I have to be like, you know what? I'm going to step aside for a second. I'm going to let somebody else come in because that's what this situation needs right now. And then literally it's amazing. Like a couple weeks later, I'm like, oh, you want me? Oh, okay, I'll come back. You know what I mean? To that sort of situation. But it's, that's the superpower. That long rambling thing makes sense. 
Did you all write that down? <laughs> no, because people don't know, really know that producing is management. And when we look at, as producers at the end credits, we are like one of the few people who have worked with every single person yeah, talk on, yeah. on, you know, from in each department, signed, you know, the checks, and had to fire some, you know. I call it hugging and releasing. You did great, but it's not for us. You know what I mean? Yes, I, I wish I could, but I can't. Exactly. Bye. Um, final note, like, uh, we were talking about your happy place, because, you know, I think it's, we've talked a lot about the, the craft, the art, the commerce, but also I think because oh, I look at this. like an old lady? Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. But I look at this audience, I see friends, I see filmmakers, yeah. I see the, the, the next generation. Yeah. Um, and um, who is going to be hiring us one day. Um, but for you, Evie, on this journey, if there's something you want to share about kind of the personal and what you've discovered that, that what is it important to hold on to and what, how do you feed it? I think that that, kind of, that giveaway is equally important in addition to all of the gems that you share. No, I appreciate that. I mean, here's a couple of things that I, I truly believe. I believe in prayer and meditation. I believe that that keeps you pulled together because there's a lot of things that knock you off your block. And if you don't have your what and your why together, do you know what I mean? If you're not like mentally, spiritually, physically like in line with it, no good comes of it. And that's someone who's ever maybe done a movie that they know they shouldn't have done. I'm not gonna mention any names. <laughs> you know, or did things like that. It's like that's really, um, I think that's really important. And I also think um, I really had to get to I am not my paycheck. I am not my paycheck. I am not, my self-esteem does not come from being in the trades, having the big deal, having the thing. Like that's really, that's like, that's not it. I really have to always go back to like what you're talking about, being of service. What is your bigger what and what is your bigger why? And for me, the last thing, and this is where I sort of sound like an old lady, but it keeps me sane in this like crazy busy time, a quilt. <laughs> I make like your granny's quilts. And I make and they're fabulous. Like I can do like I literally that's what I do and that's my way of putting different pieces and then I was gonna give like a little I put different pieces together, sewing them together, right? Making sense out of that sort of scrappy you know, chaos and then making something beautiful and then giving it away. That to me that centers me, that's my meditation time, that's my prayer meditation time of just like, and it's, and it's great, and it's literally has kept me, like when I had talked about earlier, like, we're going through a big time right now, and I can hold it with a really loose fist. When you talk about that process, that's producing. It is producing, but you know what I mean? But like, no one can tell me no. <laughs> but that's it, like putting like disparate pieces together, and being like, and here's the thing, everybody needs a blanket. Right? Everybody needs a blanket. That's, that's my thing of like, wrap on up in that. You have uh, mentioned during the course of our conversation, if people want to get in touch with you, et cetera, is there a particular means that you like? Sure. I mean, you? we're on, yeah. I mean, and then literally, you probably want to send this to my assistant because like, I will ghost like no one's business. Do you know what I mean? Like, she seems so friendly at the thing, and I've never heard from her again. No, but my, even literally at GameChangerFilms.com, there's info at GameChangerFilms.com, but I'm, it's also Effie, E-F-F-I-E, at GameChanger-Films.com. Aaron, who is in charge of the nonprofit. Aaron, stand up. Aaron, there you go. If you want that money, there you go. Aaron at Game Changer Films, and my assistant is Alexa. At Game, that's probably who you really should. And then um, my uh, head of development, his name is Miguel. Oh, Dana's like, stop saying it. What are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> and you're talking too much, Dana's like, shut up. Okay, guys. Uh, no, um, it's awesome. Give it all out. <laughs> She's like, it's been to and my now. cell phone is. <laughs> She's all like, shut up. And I can take correction. Well, needless to say, you know, there is, there are 
rules in terms of submitting materials, et cetera. Yeah, you know, so don't I mean, send a script or, you know, don't step over the line because she opened the door. Exactly. Yeah. And I probably won't respond. It'll probably be <laughs> <laughs> I'm honest. I'm many, many things. Uh, well, you, you are many, many things. You are beautiful. You are brilliant. Oh my God, I love it. You are generous. You are tough. You yeah. are, but you are, I would say Effie, she's nitty gritty, raw and real, and that's why I love her. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much. I <laughs> hope that everyone has been inspired by Effie Thank and you look for, for her name Ooh. and support her films because they're always going to rock, not only rock your world, but m like move you to the stratosphere. And um, the intention that she works from is so important, and it comes through to everyone that she touches. And so I wish you a gazillion successes. Um, the Thank inspection, you, I appreciate you. The um, inspection, please follow, 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 follow. You got it. And um, thank you, Thank everyone. you, I appreciate you guys. <laughs>